Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I am back home in the beautiful state of Minnesota. You guys, literally, I left. I came home and everything's green. I'm like, I missed the whole springtime and jumped right into summer. It's a little windy. I hope that the audio is okay for you guys. I'm actually walking down the stairs. That's a good sign, right? If you've been following me on um, <clears throat> Instagram, you know, for the last three weeks, I have been in Washington. Here's my shirt. See my shirt? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Pacific Northwest. Yes. So, okay. Um, and you know, so if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I hurt my hip, hip low back on the right side, like my second weekend, the end of my first week there. So I was like, kind of, I was limited as to where I was going to be and what I was going to be able to do and stuff. So, I mean, it's okay. It's worked out, but I'm back home now and I'm trying to walk just a little bit, really be gentle. It's better to walk than it is to like just sit and I can't sit. <laughs> I'm going to go to the chiropractor hopefully tomorrow, but uh, anyway, so I'm home and I feel nothing and everything. <laughs> so today's Sunday morning podcast Sunday morning coffee podcast is going to be about feeling nothing and everything. As an empath, I've lived my whole life feeling. And I didn't realize that that wasn't normal. But here's the thing. Feeling everybody else and not myself. And I think some of you guys are going to be in the understanding of that more now than you've ever been in before in your life. That sensing the environment and the the feeling of the people's the feelings of the people around you is really how we have kind of gotten through the past few years and now it's time to come back to ourselves and that's hard because you get to you get comfortable living in a certain way communicating through your energy field to other people around you your family your coworkers the environment, even strangers, like in the line at Target, for example, and knowing how to respond to those people and communicate with them, relate to them, comes from a reading of the energy, a sensing of the energy, which is basically a feeling of somebody else's energy space. But we have to find new and healthier ways in which to connect and communicate with one another energetically we have got to create our own fields of awareness that promote our individual wellness and our health and the awareness of the most important priority for you and for myself is that alignment within that energy of our heart chakra and our solar plexus our spirit and our heart the feelings are supposed to be information and energy that is used to support us to grow us to expand us not to paralyze us and unfortunately, we have taken this so far to the extreme, the feeling and the sensory energy that we have all been privileged to. We have taken it to the extreme now, to the point of, I believe, not even access, like it's um, not access or excess. It is really about, we're overdoing it. We're overdoing everything. We are overreacting. We are overgiving. We are over stimulated we are over we are overly doing absolutely everything because we are trying to distract from what the true reason for our being is the true purpose mission uh, point of your life is which is inside you distracting with all of this other energetic noise and nonsense is not going to serve you or anybody that you are actually in relationship with it's not now, I know we have to cut ourselves some slack, give ourselves some grace and forgiveness here because the last two years have been crazy intense. We have been forced into confinement, energetic spaces in our environment, and for some very physically forced to be with your family who you're not normally with. And over time, as people's routines change and their rhythm changes and they begin to kind of fall into a lull or a pattern or routine, a new routine, 
those routines can be, be very dramatically different than what they may have been previously. And when that happens, change occurs and there's a ripple effect. And guess what? That's natural. It's natural for change to occur. It's natural for people to respond differently to different life experiences. And we've had these experiences before, just not as dramatic as we did with the COVID. But we've had experiences of change before, like milestones, right? Like turning 30, oh, turning 21, turning 16 and getting your license, or turning 40 and being like, wow, whoa, 40? Woo, you know, or 50, or 60, or 70, or 80, or whatever it is for you. There's milestones, there's ways that we track. Uh, change and, and transition from one threshold into another threshold and so often it's easy to think about that in terms of age. How many years we've spent, how many seasons of our lifetimes we've invested, it, whether it be in a location like our home or in a relationship like in our families. And all those things do change, they're all subject to change like, like with death, most basic. When the matriarchs of the family uh, die or pass away then there's a new level of kind of recalibration that occurs within that family structure. And that's just natural, it's, it's, it's innate. We are built to transition and change and to move and flow through life. The problem becomes when we get too stuck in a rut, in our way, in our routine, that as people around us grow and change, like when your children start to age and get older and then are less dependent upon you or make their own dumbass choices, which let's be clear, that happens. Because you know you did that when you were a kid too, right? We, we did stupid things. We just didn't have the internet to like broadcast it, <laughs> you know? But just with that simply, you notice that it's natural. There's a natural progression to things. Some would say maybe a rhythm to life, right? Cycles, patterns, just like the season. Like I came home and it's green, which is kind of ironic because Seattle is considered the Emerald City. Because it is so green, it's like being in a greenhouse. It's humid and kind of rainy and mossy. It's so beautiful there. It smells so good there. And coming home and I have like the noise, the sound of the birds. And lucky for me, the weather's been beautiful in the 70s. And it's like warmer here than it was in Seattle. Appreciating the rhythm of the changes. Appreciating it. But with the beautiful change of everything waking up and the, the trees starting to bud out, there's allergies, right? There's seasonal allergies. There's, there's challenges. There's things that don't all fit about this blooming, this springtime, that, that leaning into summer, that don't fit all of us. There's adjustments we make. There's course corrections we have. And that is the flexibility that we must have, adaptability. It's not really about resiliency. It's just about the simple, natural, organic way that we adjust. It doesn't have to be some powerful, brave thing to adjust. It just happens naturally, energetically. And you can feel when you are in sync and when you're not. Or when people around you are kind of off their rhythm too. And while it is absolutely 100% natural and normal to read energy of other people, especially those around you, we have got to let go of the energy of anticipating them especially important when you are with someone that has an addiction their behavior is extraordinarily unpredictable and yet you can also anticipate based upon some signs that you might notice some observations that you might notice that they are going to go into a place where they they get their addiction kind of takes them over or where they are more prone to reach out to adjust their energy to numb it um, through their addiction and because of that you know you're getting ready you as the person who's in relationship with that person are getting ready for that fallout and that energetic state of hyper vigilance and trauma for example hyper vigilance and trauma-informed care is not easy to live in and it's most people a lot of people who are intuitive and who are moving through a lot of the empath uh, empathic understanding of the heart-based person and the feelings it's it's normal. It's something that I see all the time. And we have to give ourselves the ability to release the anticipation part, which is hard. I can't even do that either. And, and truth, I am constantly scanning my environment, my people for disruptions in the field energetically that I might have to be prepared for because I don't want to be surprised. Does that sound familiar to you? Being surprised by other people's unpredictability, their feelings and emotions 
that then trigger, you know, the behavior is coming. You know, the conversation is going to happen. You know, the action is going to take place because you feel it before it happens. And yet at the same time, it doesn't always happen. You might feel it. You might be picking up on a, 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 an energy that they're feeling and they're processing and working through it that never manifests. And guess what? By you picking up on it, you are actually bringing more attention to that potential for manifesting than is going to help the situation. That's not going to help. You anticipating, you checking in is not helpful to them or to you. So we really have to, as empathic, intuitive human beings, which we all are with our feelings, we have to begin to stop, to recognize, to, to recognize right away when we are starting to anticipate, when we are feeling uncomfortable within ourselves, so we're checking on others to see if there's gonna be a disruption or a planned attack, sneak attack. Yet inside, we're avoiding the inevitable work that we must do within ourselves that is concerned about whatever we're gonna be triggered by, that person's conversation they're gonna have with us, the person's behaviors related to their addiction that might remind you of somebody else in your past that had the same kind of behaviors in the addiction or, difficult conversations that you have to have or accountabilities or responsibilities or stressors that you already feel that somebody else just makes amplifies that energy and you're not looking forward to that but it's still going to happen it has to happen anyway eventually right so the anticipation piece is i think where we got work to do i know i do i know i do and i know i'm one of those people with the hyper vigilant state and it's better now that my children my Two of my kids are out of the house because I'm not constantly in their physical energy field. So I only tap in when I need to or to check on them. But usually I try to focus on my personal relationships now with people I love and care about and trust them to tell me and share and communicate with me. And if they're not, then I encourage them that they need to do that. If you need something, you need to articulate that. I got to trust you more to reach out to me when you need me. I got to uh, be comfortable in the fact that I have a bond with you that is going to create your ability to know that you can lean on me when you need to. And also that I'm a fun person to talk to in general. And so if you want to chat, just call me kind of a thing. And same with my kids, you know, and I do things like to like send cards and that's kind of a Bridget thing. but. But there are ways that we can be in connection and relationship with other people that is much more healthy for us energetically as much as it is in our human form, right? And being in relationship. So the communication. So as far as energetics go, I would say anticipation. We got to focus on letting go, softening the energy around anticipating. And that COVID did not help that because we were just anticipating the next blow, the next blow, the next thing, the next thing, the new policy, the next thing, the next, the next wave, the next this, the next that. And that's not... That's not a, a fun way to live. And so that's made our normal survival, scanning, empathic, spidey skills off the charts, overused overwhelmingly. And so we don't need them on high alert anymore. And where we do need the most alertness, awareness, anticipation, is it inside of ourselves. You know, that's where we gotta focus that energy because that's where it's supposed to be, is in here anticipate your needs then but in order to do that you got to know yourself better right and you're the only one that can really articulate effectively what it is that you need and to share with the people that love you about that and doesn't mean they're going to like what you say but you just show up and you authentically be yourself because that gives other people the permission to do the same thing and especially if you have children they need to see you communicating and living as a role model in being authentic even if other people don't like what you have to say your delivery does matter so don't wait, don't delay, just be you. Show up as you, tap in to drop in and tap in to how you're feeling and what's moving through you, what's alive for you, what's real for you. And then share that when you're in a place where you feel, it's not about feeling comfortable to share it, it's about knowing that what is really true for you, what is really alive and aligned for you, because sometimes it, we feel pressure to share or to have conversation when it's too early for us to do that. Like in our own processing, we're trying to figure things out and random thoughts and things and past stuff is coming up and it has nothing to do with the pattern and the relationship I'm in, but it's coming up and I don't want to project it outward just to get it out. And then this poor person that I'm in relationship with gets to receive the brunt of that, which has nothing to do with them. 
except for the fact that I'm actually in a trusting place and able to communicate that, that's not cool. Like we have to not unload on people. We have to be aligned and in our truth as we are communicating and then just allow a natural, authentic connection to occur. And then it's not, I'm not worried about how you're going to feel and I'm not worried about how I'm feeling because I already know how I'm feeling. I know what this is about. So when we are having conversation, I know what's going on inside me. I know myself well. So if you say something to me that surprises me, okay then, I process that. I think about it. I drop in to see how I feel about that. And it might be, I'm not sure. I am not sure and I don't know are completely valid responses. And if somebody that you're having a conversation with is pushing you to be sure, you have to say, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm really not sure. I don't know. I I don't know how that lands. I'm going to have to feel that for a bit. I don't know. You do not have to be forced into a reaction or response when you're having communication with people. And I think energetically, because we read people all the time as empaths and and are constantly aware of feelings, we're either trying to avoid them or read them. I think it's natural to almost feel like, okay, now you gotta respond. No, no, the response is not required. Listening is and receiving the information is required. Listen and receive the information that someone is sharing with you about their feelings. Don't tap into their feelings and tell them how they feel, which is a total Bridget thing. Let me just be clear. I do that. (laughs) Because it's kind of my job to feel into somebody what they're not really saying. And I'm like, hey, I feel this. What's that about? And then let them tell you, like as a psychic, as an intuitive life coach, like that's my job. But with my family and my friends and my personal, interpersonal relationships, that's not my job. That's not your job either. If you're a life coach, that's not your job at home. Be coaching yourself. Coach yourself, heal yourself, work on your stuff. And then you'll be able to show up more authentically in connections and interactions. It doesn't mean everything's going to go great and always be awesome and fun and, and easy. No, no. But it means you're authentic. And that's a respectful way to honor the other people that you're in relationship with. That is what love is. To be willing to hold your shit so that when somebody else is expressing where they're at, you can just honor that. You can just receive that. Not because you need to respond to it, but because you're witnessing them. You're letting them, you're allowing them some room to be able to hear themselves and process or vent. And it's okay to clarify and say, are you just venting? Am I just listening here? Or do you want advice? Because so often then as empaths too, and as people, we want to fix that. We want to soothe that energy because we don't, we're not comfortable with it. I know that I am so... Up to this point in my life, I have been so uncomfortable with other people's discomfort, which is part of why it's almost a survival instinct for me to read the room or read other people's energy. And I grew up like that. You know, it's like when there's unpredictability in the emotions of the people around you, then you're naturally going to be hypervigilant and aware so that you can protect yourself from pain from other people. And so mostly you'll probably try to please them or do good things or say F you and You'll either do one of two things. You'll totally conform and comply and kiss butt, or you'll say F you and be a rebellious type that just doesn't follow anything that anybody else says or does because you need to rely on yourself because that's your strategy. Well, I've tried both ways and neither one of them are very effective. (laughs) Let's be clear. And now that we're grown ass people, we have to act like we are evolving because we're about halfway through this life. I am at least at this point. I'm more than halfway through. And I got a lot of life to live. I got a lot of experiences to have and relationships to, to, to foster and develop and grow. And that most important thing is within myself, not pleasing other people and making sure they feel all good about themselves and they're okay. Unless you're paying me to do that because I'm a life coach, then it's okay. That part, fine. But in my interpersonal relationship, it's, it needs to be a balancing of sharing energy and not taking it on and not the expectation of response and not the expectation of me fixing it or them fixing it or I make you feel good and you make me feel good. It's not that. You feel good based upon what you're in alignment with, what you're connected to, what you're sourcing from inside and what you're bringing then into the environment. We are all responsible for our energy. We are. And the way we connect and are fluidly connecting with each other is essential and it's beautiful and we have loved that and longed for that. And when we were trapped inside for a couple of years, our relationships were forced into a completely different status. 
it has caused an incredible disruption in how we understand relationship and relating to each other and the human interaction that we we have is is now so much more valuable and important and so coming out of this place this collective shared trauma that we've been in as empaths and feeling everybody's feelings and the need to express the need to get it out the need to just be heard is so important now for all of us so are you heard within you are you there for yourself are you listening to yourself nobody's going to fix you Nobody needs to fix you. They're going to try because they want to give advice and they want you to feel better because they are uncomfortable with their feelings about you feeling uncomfortable. And just say that. It's okay. I don't need you to fix me. I just need to get it out of my body. Talk about it and just hear myself talk and just clear the space. That's it. And I trust you as a sounding board, as just somebody that's witnessing me doing that. Thank you. And that's it. That's enough. That's what friendship's about. That's what parenting is about. That's what being a good coworker is about. That's what being a good, in a good romantic partnership is about. That is what it is. Okay? You really don't have to do anything but your own work. Be authentic. The feelings are not intended as a judgment of you or a way to criticize yourself, and that is how we have interpreted them all along. I know that's how I have interpreted them. Feelings are like judgments against myself. The feeling bad, especially the feeling bad, the anxiety or the depression or the self-doubt, the misery loves company vibe, right? The complaining. Let's just take a breath in. Let's... Create some room. So this is Bridget. Thanks so much for watching my Sunday morning coffee with Bridget. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation today. I look forward to connecting with you again on this podcast next week. I'm looking forward to trying a channeling video tomorrow. We'll see how that goes (laughs) as I am back home and uh, looking to connect with you a bit more. Find me on Instagram at Bridget Inspired, on Facebook, Bridget Inspired, and Above Life Channel as well, and on YouTube at my other channel, Fairy Grasshopper YouTube and Above Life Channel.